Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more relationship stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too, you absolute cheeky so-and-so. <laughs> and let's crack on with today's first story, which comes from Low Stakes Orisit, who says, Would I be the a-hole if I told my ex-husband my concerns about his girlfriend? My ex-husband and I are in our early 40s and late 30s and have been divorced for almost three years now. While he did not want to get divorced, we separated and have been co-parenting our two preteens amicably. He lives within five blocks of our old home, and while we have 50-50 custody, our kids freely bounce between our places and choose how they want to spend holidays. We've tried hard to create a sense of stability despite the change in our family situation, and have standing tune-up therapy twice a year to make sure we're all comfortable with the arrangements. His recent partner, Maria, 29 female, has been the only one to make past the six month mark and prior to this encounter, I would say that she makes him happy and is a pretty reasonable lady. She has a very sweet and precocious son, nine, that we all adore and generally, I thought things were going well. I invited Maria to bring her son to my place if she would like him to join my kids in private language classes. She accepted and this has been going on for a few weeks now. My kids adore him. Last week, she said something to me that was surprising. She asked me when I would be moving my things out so that my ex and her could be able to cohabitate. I was taken aback and confused, asking her to clarify my current home, this home. And she nonchalantly told me, you don't need all this space for three people. We wouldn't have space at ex's current condo. Her son looked so awful and embarrassed at this point. I was like, uh, this conversation would need to include my ex. My kids and I live in Brownstone that my ex and I purchased together 50-50, but that I have been renovating since before the divorce. My ex lives in a nice condo that's spacious, but it's still a little bit of a man cave. Later in the evening, I got a text from her son that was pleading for me to forgive his mum, that he's sorry for his mum and not to tell my ex. I feel awful, but I think I should let my ex know this conversation occurred and let him handle it. Would I be the a-hole if I told my ex-husband my concerns about his girlfriend? Edit. I'm the single owner of the house. My ex insisted throughout the divorce that I keep it. We do co-own his condo though. Lol. And OP did add some additional comments. I gave some additional info down below and it said, Before our divorce, we owned both properties outright. Our divorce was very amicable. He insisted I keep the brownstone. After the divorce, I had my lawyer help me transfer the brownstone deed and my ex signed the documents. He just never did that with the condo. I asked him a few times and the answer's always been hand wavy. I'm his ex-wife, not going to continue nagging him on something that he's dragging his feet on. The awkward conversation happened in person. I shut it down because her son was there and I could tell he understood the situation and felt uncomfortable. He texted me afterwards from his own phone. He's a special kid in the best way, very mature and advanced for his age. The thing is, I don't think it's been discussed between them at all. I think she may have just assumed When we separated, he insisted that I keep the house and that I don't need to buy him out. The house belonging to me is ironclad. I just got nervous and blurted out that we'd discuss it because her son was there. Now, to me in this situation, you'd absolutely not be the a-hole for raising this with your ex. I think you should be raising with ex. And I do feel sorry for the young boy, a nine-year-old who feels like they have to apologize for their mum's behavior. That comes across really concerning to me and the only other thought is that the mum's using his phone and this might be reaching a bit using his phone to get her to not say anything to the ex but if it is him texting that's what's going through his head a child of nine years old shouldn't have to worry about anything like that but superb space says not the a-hole your ex-husband should be the one having that conversation so you absolutely need to share this with him Weird that the nine-year-old has a better emotional gauge than his mum, though. OK Mode says, not the a-hole. Yeah, this needs to be discussed with your ex. You don't have to approach as being concerned, though, if you don't think that would go well. Just be like, by the way, this conversation occurred, and I'm not sure how you want to handle explaining to her that this is my house, and I won't be moving out. GWXN says, you would not be the a-hole, but tell him immediately and include screenshots of what the kid sent you in case she tries to lie about what she said. You need to squash this with him ASAP and find out if he had any role in this. 
Dread Girl says, Years ago, I had a strange encounter with an ex's fiance. Despite the fact that I found it incredibly unsettling, I decided not to tell him about it. Despite the fact that he and I were on excellent terms, I didn't completely trust my motivations for wanting to tell him. Four years later, after she'd taken him for everything he had, I told him about the strange encounter I'd had with her. He became so angry with me for not telling him at the time. It was clear foreshadowing that she was only after his assets and I let myself second guess the reasonings behind my feelings. He lost his shirt. I lost his friendship. It sucked. You would not be the a-hole if you told your ex. You might be if you didn't know. Just jazz to be here says not the a-hole. It sounds like this needs to be discussed. Not necessarily because of her, but because it's obviously come up in their discussions. If you are divorced and still have shared property, I think that's what this says, then you will need to sort that out sooner than later. She wouldn't really be the issue. The ownership of the property is the issue, and it sounds like he's thinking about it if she brought it up. And one more comment from Elegant Ant, who says and quotes, she asked me when I would be moving my things out, and then goes on to say, not the a-hole. It sounds like either she and your ex have discussed this, possibly without his ever agreeing to anything, or she is trying to cause trouble between you and him. Since a nine-year-old knows about it, there's no serious intention of keeping it secret. I'd raise it with your ex so that everyone knows what was said and move on from there. I haven't promised anyone secrecy, so I don't see why you'd have any moral obligation to keep this quiet. So then OP updates the post three months later and says, I procrastinated to bring up what Maria said and basically told myself, assume the best intentions slash awkward curiosity. My thought process was that it's my home and she'd have to cart me out of here on the back of a hearse. I admit I was also nervous about raining on his happiness and did not want to be perceived as a bitter ex. The kids had a grand time at camp and a month or so ago later, we had a family dinner with both sets of grandparents. My ex brought Maria and it started out great. Everyone welcomed Maria and her son. Maria was helping me finish up dessert in the kitchen and I was patting myself on the back for the goop level blended family dynamic when she made an off the cuff comment about how she'd host parties here. X came in with the kids overheard and asked, oh, did Opie offer you to host? Maria's son just burst into tears and started apologizing. It was genuinely one of the most awkward experiences of my life. Long story short, the entire family has learned that X had a vasectomy after divorce and is not looking to remarry anytime soon. Afterwards, I talked to him about the previous interaction along with showing him the text messages. They're no longer together. I'm worried about Maria's son, although I recognize it's not my place. Unsure what I can do there. Edit. Some people asked why I laughed at the end of my edit that I owned half his condo. It was mainly out of uncomfortable irony. X is extremely driven and brilliant in his career, but disorganized in life. Wow, I feel for OP and I feel for X in this situation, but whenever I hear about young kids dealing with stuff like this, it absolutely breaks my heart. Nine years old, and having to apologize for your mum's behavior, breaking down like that. It just felt to me and shown that, you know, this isn't the first time something like this has happened where he's had to apologize for his mum and kind of think well, what is that poor kid's future going to be like with having to deal with someone like that having to apologize for someone else constantly like that absolutely breaks my heart but what do you guys make of this situation let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and let's move on to another story and i fancied something a little bit different for our second story today so i went over to the r slash petty revenge subreddit and there was a guy called chill dude 890 who says how I gutted my HOA. I love an HOA story. I mentioned in the past that we don't really have HOAs over in the UK. Some people corrected me and says we do have similar things, but they're not quite as uh, crappy as some of the ones that we see in this story. And obviously they're all going to be different. Some people saying that they live in an HOA and it's absolutely fine and they're nothing like these. But we're obviously going to see the worst in these type of stories. So this story is titled How I Gutted My HOA. Backstory. A few years ago, I bought my first house in a medium-sized 500 to 1,000 homes neighborhood in a southern state. It had an HOA, but I actually picked the neighborhood because they had the lowest HOA dues in the city, the fewest rules, and the house was by far the nicest one I could afford in my budget. After a few weeks, I get a violation notice from the HOA telling me that I had two violations needing correction. One, my lawn was not green enough. 
Two, my trash cans were too close to my driveway. I was thoroughly confused about one as it was February in the middle of winter. So of course my lawn was dead like pretty much everyone else's. So I'd assume that either this was a mistake or an existing offense from the previous owner. As for the trash cans, I kept them on the side of my house. And I think when the HOA came by, my trash can stuck out past the sidewall one foot. So how dare I? <laughs> I shrugged them off and continued on. Come March, I got another notice this time fining me for both violations. Each one cost me $100 and they wanted the money in two weeks. I was pissed. This made no sense and I was not about to let them just try and get money for BS violations. So I called the management company that worked with the board to get them appealed. The lady told me that I needed to appeal directly to the board and that I could do so in the next annual meeting in a few days. So I of course showed up to the meeting. Prior to it starting, I met with a few homeowners and learned that they were all there for similar BS violations and were peed off too. I then talked with one of the members of the board about the fine appeals process. He was an older guy in his 70s with short grey hair and a very worn and angry face. He asked what I was getting fined for. When I told him, he just looked at me and said, and you should get fined for that. Young people like you not taking care of their homes is the whole reason I got on this board. Learn to be a better property owner. This dude was the VP of a volunteer board telling me that I did not know how to take care of my house. What a sad life. The meeting then started and the moderator mentioned that since this was an annual meeting, we would be voting on three out of five board members. They had some applicants to the board and we could also nominate someone today. That's when I had the idea of how I could get my revenge. When the election part of the meeting came, I nominated myself, gave some BS speech about HOAs are not here to make money and that I wanted to serve my community. And I won in a landslide and you could see the board members getting annoyed because they had scowled during my speech. After the meeting, I appealed my violations in a very elegant way and they agreed to waive my trash can violation. As for the grass one, apparently since I had weeds growing in my yard, like a tiny patch in the corner, they were still fining me because the weeds were turning yellow after I sprayed them. I was dumbfounded how they could get away with this but they used the technicality in the bylaws that I had signed, so I ended up losing $100. Revenge. I will be honest, I had not expected this to work. After joining the board of five, including myself, I was appointed secretary and had to help maintain meeting notes and review records. They specifically told me that I was not allowed to propose new policies, but I could vote on new ones proposed by the VP or president, which I later learned was actually a violation of their own rules. I voted every new rule down as long as I was in that position. I decided that my best course of action was to listen to how the others operated and look for an opening to get each one of them off the board. The first opening came when the president, who literally looked like the most Karen woman ever, mentioned that she wanted to find for flowers that were not a neutral color. Basically, if a homeowner wanted to add something like turquoise flowers, we would find them. She apparently had a neighbor that had flowers that she didn't like and she wanted to use the board to stop them. It was pretty insane. I then started my revenge on her. I started a message thread on Slack since that's how we communicated with the other board members and asked what they had thought about her policy and reasoning. After far too much deliberation, two of them honestly thought that this was okay. We agreed that the policy went too far. I then made a long post in the main channel telling her that her actions were not only wrong, but that she should be excused from the board. When she inevitably flipped out, I called a board meeting in the following week and the other four board members voted her off for targeting a community member for personal gain. She gave a sob story about how the board was her life and that the neighborhood was like her child, but I didn't care. That was one down. I convinced one of my good neighbor friends to join a little later on to take her spot. The next members I targeted were the treasurer and director, as I wanted to save the VP for last. They were actually pretty easy to get off the board because they were very easily swayed by public opinion. So I made a fake account on Nextdoor and waited until spring when most of the violations go out. When the letters went out, I looked for angry posts on Nextdoor. I then would comment on each one, giving them the first names of the two board members as the culprits and told them to come to the next HOA meeting to appeal. It worked far better than I expected. During the next meeting, over 50 people showed up and called out those by name. It was glorious. During the open session, community members grilled those two for their poor policies. 
even though they did not make most of them. The VP, now president after the other one resigned, tried to defend them, but ultimately failed. The two members were so distraught after the meeting, and I told them that maybe they should resign, and they both did. That was two more down, both of which were replaced by a couple who came to the same meeting and wanted to get rid of these rules. Finally, the board had flipped to four out of five people wanting to get rid of these dumb rules. The president, however, was still the same old, angry, hateful man. He tried to add more rules to increase violation revenue, and we voted him down every time. He started to get annoyed, but stayed steadfast to the board. I tried a lot of tactics to get him to leave, and not much swayed him. A few months went by, and we started with a new management company. They had a much better style of property management, and a website looking through our community's records, as well as automated reports. When we got our first fines report, I hit pay dirt. The president's house appeared and he owed around $10,000. Apparently, he had open violations that he had never paid and the other management company hid from the board for him since he had been on the board for close to seven years. So I looked into remedies. Since his fines were over $3,000, our bylaw stated that a majority vote of the board could start a HOA foreclosure on the home, which I still think is insane that HOAs can do that. So I got all the docs together and double checked with the new management company that the fines were correct, which they confirmed. I called an emergency board session, presented the information, and four out of five of us voted to start the foreclosure process. The president got angry, cursed, and left the meeting early. We were informed a few days later that the president had resigned, paid his fine, and put his house up for sale. While I'm sad we couldn't force a foreclosure, at least he was off the board. I'm currently president to this day, and I have reduced the fining policy to a maximum of $400, and the homeowners can appeal any time that they wish digitally. In addition, I have banned any grass fines until May, and trash can violations have been super relaxed. Moral of the story, never fine me $200, call me a stupid young kid, and expect to not lose your house. And I gotta say, I do love an HOA story. I'm a big fan of neighbor stories in general, but I personally, and like I said at the very start, we're probably always hearing the worst of HOAs here. There might be some out there that's absolutely wonderful and everyone loves to be a part of, possibly. (laughs) But whenever anyone ever talks about HOAs, it always gives me this vivid picture in my head that, I don't know, every other week or whatever they do, like a whole group of them goes down the street with a clipboard, like walking through the middle of the street, looking at the grass, measuring it with a ruler and all this kind of stuff. I mean, trying to fine you for dead grass in February. Like you said, grass is dead. (laughs) It's February. But whilst we're in this subreddit, we're going to go with one more little neighborly type story from the toilet destroyer who says, Entitled Parker parked in my driveway, so I blocked him in and got drunk all weekend. Friday night, I came home from work to find someone on our block was having a large party and someone decided they were entitled to park in my driveway. Keep in mind my driveway is a single car width lined with a retaining wall on both sides and a garage at the end. Essentially impossible for a tow truck to come pull them out without property damage. Seeing this and the lack of street parking, I took this as a cue to park right behind them in my driveway. Now a few hours go by and their entitled parker is now knocking on my door demanding I move my car so she can leave. Seeing as they were demanding, I informed them that I'd been drinking and would not move my car. The entitled parker then decides to call the police to get them to force me to move. When the police knocked on my door, I was sure to grab a beer from the fridge before I answered to talk to the officer. I'd informed him that after I got home, I was unwinding and had been drinking and was in no shape to drive. At this point, their hands were tied because they couldn't tow a car out. I'm in no shape to drive and I'm legally parked in my driveway. I ended up telling the entitled parker that since it's a long weekend, I'd be on a weekend long bender and they could come move my car after I go to work on Tuesday. And this is what petty revenge is all about, and I absolutely love it. Parking disputes, man. You may have heard me in the past talk about just down the road for me. There's a street down there, and there's a local school there as well. And whenever I walk past, you can see cars going to pick up their kids or dropping their kids off or whatever, and they park on people's driveway. They literally drive onto their driveway and then go and drop their kids off. And I think you absolute cheeky bastards they don't ask they just park there leave their car and go in i've seen some arguments in there before i can remember walking past once and 
this car parked on the drive and the guy who owned the house was literally stood outside and he said, you can't park there, that's my driveway. And their response was, well, I need to drop my kids off. It's like, that's not my problem, mate. Go and park your car somewhere else. And the person did literally leave the car there and just went with their kid. But the person who owned the house was stood there sort of like mouth agape, just staring at them. And the people who do live around there complain to the school and the school sends out letters, but there's only so much they can do. But the absolute audacity of the person in this story to park on someone's driveway just for one is absolutely insane. But then to knock on their door and say, I'm calling the police if you don't move your car. You bloody call them then. Call the police on yourself, you absolute moron. But with stories like this, malicious compliance, the revenge subreddits, I always say it, I'd love to be a fly on that wall, just watching that situation go down. Watch their face and say, no, I'm not moving my car. I'm too drunk to do it. <laughs> What a time to be alive, right? But now I'm going to turn this one to you guys. Do you have any neighbor-related drama going on? Don't forget to let us know in our own subreddit, r slash Mark Narrations. I always love to see neighbor-related stuff. One of my favorite things. But as always, a huge thank you for spending your time with me today. 20 minutes out of your day is incredibly important. And I'm so appreciative of you for doing so. Thank you so, so much. And hopefully I will see you in the next one. Take care and much love. <laughs>